Rapscallions of Reddit, what's the shadiest scummiest thing you've gotten away with? I was 7 years old. It was Mother's Day. My dad had been given the task of dragging me to the shops to buy something for my mum. She really loved chocolate covered almonds, so I proudly handed over my pocket money and brought the sweets home. For some reason my dad thought it would be an excellent idea to leave the 7 year old in charge of more chocolate than they usually saw in a year. Naturally I lasted about a day before the sugary siren call of chocolate melted my 7 year old resolve. I sucked the chocolate off every almond, I didn't eat the almonds that would have been disgusting. A few days later I realized with a shock of sugary guilt that just maybe mum would notice what had happened. I did the only thing I could do lead my 3 year old sister into the room, sit her down and solemnly tell her how very wrong it was she'd eaten mum's special chocolates. I repeated the phrase over and over to her, like I was an evil child hypnotist. Eventually she ran out of the room crying to confess what she'd done. I couldn't believe I'd gotten away with it. In the years that followed my family would tell the story every Mother's Day, my sister adding embellishments to her entirely false memory. Last year, at the age of 35 I finally told my family what really happened. And not one of them would believe me, including my sister. TLDR. Jerk kid me steals candy and hypnotizes infant to take the fall. Was really poor, in school, driving across country in an old silver sports sportska to my mum's place, blowing through tolls, because I had zero cash. Get to the toll booth for Ohio at like 3am, thinking I'm gonna grab the ticket and keep driving. Instead the toll booth operator gets out of the booth, leaving the stopping arm down. He says we've been having reports of someone in a grey sports car not paying and skipping the tolls. I freeze. Cold sweat. And then I stammer. But, but, but my car is silver. He looks at my car, hesitates for a few seconds, and says, oh. Sorry then waves me through. My face. Worked at Starbucks from age 16 to 18. Later in my time there, the new manager wanted to ensure she would get her bonus, so she hired a bunch of people and cut my hours. Being that I was living on my own and scraping by even with a full-time job, I really started to feel the crunch. I begged for more hours, offering to work mornings and nights, basically any time. I was told that it just wasn't possible, so to keep myself from starving I started stealing pastries. Not a huge deal. But then it turned into a game for me, because it was so easy. I managed to steal 4 of the wooden chairs they had in the cafe, as well as CDS, gallons of milk, entire boxes of pastries, cases of toilet paper, just about anything I could. I never stole money though for some reason, that didn't feel right. I ended up getting fired from calling in sick, and then being seen that same day, at the pharmacy to buy cold medicine. Funded the my entire CD collection in middle school by selling adult magazines I, um, acquired from a local literature store. When they got a new month's shipment in, they were kept in boxes in the loading dock area in the back of the store until they were put on shelves. The back was always unlocked and right off a side street I walked down every day. I would just step in when the coast was clear, grab a backpack full, and book it. Kids paid crazy amounts to get their hands on a hustler, but my record was $80 for a single issue of penthouse letters. This was in the early days of dial-up internet, so you can understand how desperate us teenage boys were. Not me but a friend I know, somehow be snapped off a key in the door of a car. Back when cars had physical keys so like 10 years ago, calls a locksmith who gets the door open. Locksmith. Drive it down to the shop and I'll fix it there friend. How am I going to drive it there that was my only key locksmith okay hold on. The locksmith then drills a hole in the ignition and gives him a screwdriver. Locksmith. Okay so now you can start the car with a screwdriver just drive to, to the shop and I'll get it all fixed up. My friend drives off and kept a screwdriver in the car for the next 3 years. Never went to the shop. Kept starting it with the same screwdriver that he didn't give back. I have an older sister, when she was in high school, and I was in middle school, my father discovered that the vodka he kept in the freezer had frozen, which meant it was no longer completely vodka and some proportion of it had been replaced with water. I was too young to be a suspect, but my sister was old enough to have started drinking with her high school friends, so the blame fell on her. She has always insisted it wasn't her, but I suspect it was. 
The scummy part comes a few years later, when I started drinking myself. My sister spent a lot of time at home, even after she graduated high school and went to college. And one night during a time when she was home I hit the vodka up, replaced the missing volume with water, and put it back in the freezer. When it was discovered I made the argument that I, a STEM focused on a student, was way too smart to not realize water freezes before alcohol, especially since the previous incident had already demonstrated what would happen. Sister got the blame again. I was homeless for a while as a teenager. It was pretty rough. There was a store near me that had a hot deli in the back. When you purchased a deli item you could either pay there or up at the front of the store. If you paid at the deli counter they would tape the box or back shut with special tape that had the name of the store on it, and you could just walk out the front. I stole a roll of the tape, and would go in, and get a hot meal once in a while and tape it shut myself and walk out. I still feel a little bad about it. One time at work, I don't work there now, I was super constipated, and took a brain busting, stroke inducing, super sized shit. Felt good. Had some blood on it. I flushed, it didn't move. I flushed a few more times, and it went down enough to go out of sight. Obviously the toilet was clogged, and all sorts of fucked up. I left the bathroom, and got lucky enough to avoid being seen. Thing was, the manager was next to use the bathroom and of course he comes out mad saying some shit had clogged the toilet. Well nobody believes him, and put squarely the blame on him. Ended up having to call Dr. Drain to fix the toilet. We were all standing slash sitting around, and people kept saying how the manager doesn't get enough fiber in his diet. It was hilarious, and nobody realized why I was laughing so hard. They thought I was laughing at what the manager did to the toilet. Good times. In like 2011 I used to be really into Minecraft, and would frequent a crappy server started by a really terrible website. The admin barely knew anything, and any non-protected land was basically like Fallout. It was hard to survive and thrive because of hackers, so I just spent a lot of time in the town, since it was protected. The town had a really tall tower that you could fall off, killing you instantly. I found a glitch where, if you exited the serve midfall, and went back on, you would land without getting hurt. I would regularly convince players the admin removed, full damage by doing this, and then they'd be all like wow, I wanna try, and jump off. And there I was, waiting at the bottom, collecting everyone's iron, tools, and sweet sweet diamonds. I worked in a bowling alley in college, and my roommate and I were often the last to leave and lock up. We would try to get all our closing jobs done before the end of our shift, so that when the last customer left, we could punch out and leave as well. The manager noticed that we were punching out right at closing time, and accused us of skipping or hurrying closing procedures. He expected us to be there for at least a half hour past closing time, to do the jobs thoroughly. The next time we were ready to leave at closing time, we noticed that the face of the punch clock opened very easily. We moved the clock a half hour ahead, punched out, then put it back to regular time. Did that for two years, and never got caught. The extra hour or two every week on the paycheck didn't hurt either. I used to play Ultima Online during its heyday. Bank thieves were a huge problem back then. They'd hang out at the banks in town which were used as the main social hangouts in addition to banking centers, and try to rob you as you were doing your business or just hanging out. Many of them were low effort characters, who had the default physical appearance, white guy with short white hair, and they typically wore the white robes characters respawned with, when they were resurrected, called death robes, because the guards kill them all the time. So, one day, I got fed up so much, that I decided to create the most ridiculous, over the top bank thief ever just as a parody. This was on the Great Lakes shard, which I chose, because it wasn't my usual shard. His name was Bank Thief, he had the default appearance, and I never took him out of his death robe after his first resurrection. I never bothered macroing his skills up, or practicing on non-player targets. People at the healer shops would have fun every time they saw me resurrect, and every time I'd make my ghost visible, saying things like OMG it's the ghost of bank thief, pour holy water on it. I would walk right next to people at the bank, open my bank box, a patch meant you couldn't open your bank box if you were flagged as a criminal, but you could still keep it open if it was already open, 
which involved saying the word bank out loud, and then snoop through the guy's pack, steal something, and try to move it into my bank box. 90% of the time, my skill roll would fail, the item would stay put, I'd get caught, and the guards would kill me. Most of the rest of the time, it would fail partially, so I'd get caught, and thus killed by the guards, but still steal it. Most of those times, my victim would just loot his item back off my corpse. On a very few occasions, I was able to move my mouse fast enough to get it into my bank box. It was almost always something worthless nobody would miss. Except one time. I stole a diamond out of some guy's backpack, and didn't even get caught. Got it into my bank box right away, and he never even noticed it was gone. Even though my name is Bank Thief, I looked like the stereotypical bank thief, and I walked right up to him and said bank. I still feel really bad for that one. A few months later, the Thieves Guild patch went in, and Bank Thief had to retire, though I never deleted him. Much later, I eventually deactivated my account, and that diamond was still in Bank Thief's bank box up until the day I deactivated my account. It was middle school gym. During the beginning time when everyone changed once you were done changing the cool kids would go into the gym teacher's office. I didn't usually get to do that, but this day was special, and I was a part of the group inside. I'm casually trying to act cool, be a part of the group and lean back on the gym teacher's desk. Only to notice that I had just knocked over my gym teacher's large glass of water. I looked up and luckily no one had noticed. So I quietly snuck out and went to my locker. About a minute later I hear yelling, who the hell knocked over my water. I heard all the other kids saying they hadn't done it, when the gym teacher chose the kid who was the class clown as his victim. Next thing I know, that kid ran a mile, and had to do 100 push ups. To this day no one really knows who knocked over that water but me. Me, British. Location, Australia. Sydney, Potts Point area. Swanky modern glass fronted hotel. That serves as the meetup place for people that booked one of those helicopter flights over the city. Time, an hour earlier than I should been. I was staying in the Jolly Swagman Backpacker Hostel in King's Cross. I turned up for the shuttle bus to go to the helicopter thing, but no bus turned up. I went to the front desk, all apologetic. Tell them I had booked the flight when near the opera house and no bus. Oh no. The man at the desk called them, and I was early. That's all. Still 50 minutes to go, and we are still serving breakfast. Lovely, I thought. If I'm going to treat myself for the day, a swanky cooked breakfast will set me right. And they had a full spread. I got some of those Aussie wheat bix, scrambled egg and bacon, some toast, orange juice, and a nice milky cup of coffee. I approached the woman at the till, said, good morning. In my obviously not from around here accent, and reached into my pocket for my wallet. You're alright, love, said the woman at checkout, waving me through to the tables. As I sat there, looking at others getting their first meal of the day, it dawned on me. I was wearing a reasonably nice shirt, cool looking cargo shorts, new rear box. They thought I was staying there at the hotel. I just stole a free quality breakfast from a country that was set up originally to receive our criminals. Fucking result. I've successfully evaded police. I was going down a hill that goes from a 45 miles per hour to 30 miles per hour speed limit. I was doing nearly 50 and didn't see the reduced speed ahead sign. Then the trooper passes me going the opposite direction and I see him about a half mile behind me turning around and turning on his lights. The road was really winding and I used the decent amount of time I was out of his field of view to gun it to the nearest parking lot and parked behind a truck. I saw him fly right by and then passed him again on the way home. The look on his face was priceless, but he couldn't prove it was my car that was speeding anymore. Oh and drugs, lots and lots of drugs. I worked at a panera in high school, back when a small coffee was $1.98. I would go to work every morning with a pocket full of pennies and leave them under my register. Whenever someone paid for a small coffee I would hand them their cup and two pennies from my pocket stash and ask if they'd like their receipt. 90% of the people declined the receipt and I would deploy an empty piece of receipt paper and crumple it up for authenticity. I pocketed perhaps dollar sign 20 dash 30 a day for years until the price of a small coffee went up. And for all those wondering, Panera employees do not split tips. 
was working in at the 18th hour of my shift. Went out to buy some food, and also bought a tetra pack of rum which looks similar to a popular apple juice sold in India. Mixed the pack in a bottle of coca cola and happily worked on a mostly empty office. The office has a strict no drinking on premises policy and a security guard on his rounds. Became suspicious of the smell and confronted me. I pointed at an empty bottle of hand sanitizer on my desk and said that I spilled some. He believes me and I get the hell out of there. Accidentally stole $50 of liquor on my birthday about a decade ago. Went up to the register to pay. Two middle aged women at the counter started chatting me up and didn't believe I was legal age. So I handed over my to them while still having a conversation. They bagged up my liquor, handed back my in the bag of liquor and I walked out of the store. Didn't realize until I got home that I didn't pay for it. A similar thing happened years later on Mother's Day. Went to a flower shop and picked out some flowers. The cashier and another worker were having an argument at the time in another language while the cashier packaged up my flowers and handed them to me. I waited at the counter for a few minutes with my credit card in hand to pay, but they just looked at me funny, asked if I needed anything else, and told me I could leave. I was very poor at the time, so I just left with my free flowers. Found the presents that were hidden for us kids to open on Christmas morning, but they had not been wrapped yet. Through deduction I found out which toys were meant for me. One of them, I thought was lame so on out next trip to the store I grabbed my dad and took him to that specific toy and told him how lame it was. He asked me what toy I thought wasn't lame. I showed him. Woke up Christmas morning to the toy I thought was cool 